Josh Green here for Tunks and Tales. Delighted to be joined by Richard Astown for the first time in a while. I know we did something in the studio not so long ago, but over Zoom today. I'm not sure how to address you, Richard. What's your what's your title at the moment? What can I call you? You can call me Richard if you like. But <laughs> <laughs> from the WDF's point of view, they call me their chief development officer. Chief development. Sounds good. It sounds sounds excellent. <laughs> sounds excellent. We're, we're nearing Lakeside once again. Uh, there's a, a countdown on the website, just 81 days until we're back at the Lakeside Excitement Building. You must be excited yourself. Yeah, of course I am. I'm excited from the WDF standpoint, but I'm excited on the personal level as well. Um, it's a venue I love to work in, love to be part of. So, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. And how, must it, how exciting must it be for all the players that have missed out on, on so much action over the years, we've over the last couple of years, we've seen them obviously back in in Denmark not so long ago, and getting back to the circuit, and uh, not long until a, a World Championships. Yeah, I mean we want to keep this interview upbeat, Josh, but it has been horrible for the wider game. We know that the PDC have done very well in catering for the the top end in terms of uh, tournament play going on behind closed doors. The way the WDF and all the nations run their Opens is completely different. They rely on the economy of a large amount of players playing. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, the ranking shut down for some 18 months, so we could really feel the excitement at the two big events that I was part of in uh, September, October. So the England Open in Selsey. Hmm. Such a good feeling after 18 months. <clears throat> it was the Isle of Man in March 2020, the previous. Mm -hmm. So you could really feel that in the venue. And then again in Denmark, and for Denmark more so, was about players outside of the UK being able to go to their first event. So a lot of the mainland European players commenting in the same way as they were for the UK players in Selsey. Mm. So yeah, everyone's just really excited. And as you've put so well, the, the key thing is they have something to fight for at the end of the season. Yeah, yeah. Well, just talk to me about Denmark. I mean, it must have been exciting for you to be out there. And as you say, so many faces that you, you wouldn't have seen so, for so long. And chances for them to get back on the hockey with something big at stake. Yeah, Denmark was a key event, actually, because that was the week originally scheduled for the WDF World Cup in that venue. Mm -hmm. The Denmark Open itself is usually played in May. So the DDU and the WDF made a joint decision to add an extra gold event into the season because the players, of course, need more events, more ranking points. Uh, so we were really grateful that Denmark could still cater for a big event at that time of the year. And it's such a good venue. It, it, and the atmosphere there, in, not just in the, the playing of the game, but as I say, all of the talk around it. Mm. There was a lot of buzz, a lot of positivity around the fact that the WDF circuit was up and running again. 100%. And we've got two new players, well, players we've seen time and time again before, but Thibaut Tricol. And Anka Zilstra are now in the, the World Championships. And mm -hmm. that just shows what an event like that can do. It's confirmed them a place at the lakeside. Yeah, we were really keen to do that. It's one of the new initiatives we've added where the, the, the premier open events, the champions get a direct path. Yeah. Because we, what we want to see at Lakeside are those players that are most comfortable playing on stage and that have achieved things. I think the BDO system in ranking terms was flawed in the past where it lent itself a bit more to the, to the journey player, those that could collect a lot of points with last 16s, last 32s. What we want in the ranking system and the rewards to be to those players that achieve, win things, get on stage. That's that's what we want for the lakeside. I guess it's a, such a big thing being comfortable up on, up on that stage. Mm -hmm. The opportunities to play in front of TV cameras in the, the amateur system, there, there aren't too many of them. But if you can do that, on a big final, uh, something like a Denmark Open, then you're ready made for something like a Lakeside. That's how we feel it. Yeah, we, we had we had situations in the past where the World Trophy winner, the WDF World Cup singles winner, wasn't at Lakeside. You know, you, you really want your big winners to be there. 100%, 100%. Uh, and just moving on, I mean, the World Masters, obviously not going ahead this, this year, unfortunately. Um, was that a difficult decision to make? Obviously, it was made quite a while before um, before the event. Was it a difficult decision? It was difficult on a personal level that we were so disappointed, but it was the right decision in terms of the restrictions that we were up against. We'd already made the promise to the member nations, which is basically what the WDF is. It's just a formation of 70-plus countries that we would wait 
no less than three months to make that decision. So the 1st of September fell and the restrictions at that point meant that we couldn't have a multi-day event indoors under the Dutch regulation. So with everything in place, as far as television, sponsorship, the venue, the organisation, it was so frustrating to have to pull it. Yeah. Um, uh, there was no real viable option to go elsewhere at such short notice that would be cost effective. So for all of those players that have earned the right to play at the World Masters, what we'd rather give all of them is a, one, a World Masters at 100%. It, we, we didn't want to uh, condense it or, or, you know what I mean? We, we mm. wanted to make sure that those, similar to when we cancelled the WF World Cup a few months ago, there's no point in us running a WF World Cup when the previous year had 53 countries if the next year only has 20. Yeah. So similar thought with the World Masters. We didn't want to obligate so many countries who are unable to travel to have to try and make efforts to get to the World Masters at high cost or, despite all their best efforts, not be able to go. Mm. Yeah, that's that's been a problem for players for, for so long. And it looks as though, uh, obviously, in the UK that, we're getting the chance now for, for players to travel and so many more are getting the chance to travel. Um, and hopefully there won't be anything, any issues when we get to January and, and Lakeside comes around. I'm sure you, you share the same sentiment. Yeah, but Lakeside is a different thing, of course, because you're only dealing with certain individuals that may need some help with travel. What the World Masters gave us the issue with is a member nation looking to send four, eight, 12 players. Mm to a country that they can't gain access to. And there's no guarantee, of course, of any prize money. But the costs incurred maybe for a player traveling from around the world to come to Lakeside as, a, as an individual, yeah, you could justify it. The World Masters is very different. We were looking at an event with over a thousand players. So yes, the Lakeside will deal with each and every qualifier as they come about from all the countries and do our very, very best to ensure that they can take part. Yeah. And uh, just moving on to, to Lakeside, I mean, obviously it's going to be running from the 1st to the 9th of January this year. Um, as many people on social media have noticed, there is a, a three-day crossover with the, the PDC World Championships. Can you just explain why that is and why those dates were, were chosen in particular for the event? Yeah, sure. It's not ideal. It's not what we would um, choose if we had control over all of the dates on the diary, but we don't. This isn't a new thing. The BDO World Championship and now the WDF World Championship at the Lakeside has started on the first Saturday of the year for years and years and years. Mm -hmm. It's always the first Saturday, any time between the first and the seventh. And it just so happens that in 2022, the first Saturday is New Year's Day. Mm -hmm. So it means there will be an overlap. When we actually chose the dates, we didn't know the PDC World Championship dates. We knew we could clash maybe one day, but we didn't know if it was going to be one, two, three or four. Um, the main reason for the choice of date comes to the people that fund the event, which are the sponsor and the broadcaster, both of which want the first week of January rather than the second. What we also have to consider is for the players involved, there's a very key date on the diary, which is Q school. Mm. And that falls traditionally on the third weekend of January. So if we were to move Lakeside on one week on, even though that would alleviate a clash on television, it wouldn't alleviate a clash for the players. And I think that would be more detrimental to the players in the WDF system than it is having an overlap on television for three days. It's, it's going to be 2022, Josh. It's not like it was 25 years ago. People can follow more than one channel. They, they can view both events. I think it will be okay. And I don't think it will be of any detriment as far as the audience in the venue are concerned. We spoke very briefly. We're not 100% sure when the when the link will be out for those tickets, but we expect it imminently, don't we? Yeah, absolutely. I'm hoping that when people are watching this interview that the link's already live, but we know that tickets are going on sale in October. We're just waiting for our hosts and sponsors to release the links and away we go. Fantastic, fantastic. Um, and just looking ahead to, to the tournament, obviously, once again, we'll have boys final on stage um, later in the week, obviously, the, is, uh, I believe the girls' final will be will be joining them on stage. Is that correct? Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yes, we're going to have. I mean, even the ladies' final has now moved to the Sunday. We're going to have a finals day. It, the, mm. In the past, the youth final was on Thursday, and the ladies' final was on Saturday. It's all going to be on Sunday the ninth. 
we have added the girls to the program. All of the other WF tournaments from cups and opens run with separate boys and girls tournaments where, where they're available. So we wanted the, the premier event to have the same feel. So there will be the opportunity for the first time for the girls to play their final on the lakeside stage. And it's very difficult to fit more games into the scheduling. We've already extended the men's and ladies field, yep. but we've also upped the boys line up to the, include the semi-finals on the Saturday. So with the, the boys and the girls tournaments, where are the, where is the, the, the exits of the, uh, let me start that again. Um, with the boys and the girls tournaments, the previous rounds, whereabouts are they going to be played into the, sort of the lead up to the, the television stages of the tournament? Well, they'll be on the same day as the Lakeside World Championship qualifying competition in yep. Assen in the Netherlands on Sunday the 5th. So effectively, the early rounds of the World Youth Championship are also played that day. Okie dokie. Um, having looked at the schedule, in the opening few days, I believe it is, there's six games in a session, that being four men's and two ladies. Mm -hmm. um, I'm assuming this means a, a slightly reduced format in the first round for the men's, or would it be going still to three sets? Do we know? No, I think we anticipate that the men's event will be played over the best of three sets in the opening round, first of two. Okay. But that isn't confirmed because until we know exact broadcast times, and that is up for discussion in, 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 as we speak, actually. Mm -hmm. So all of those elements are yet to be finalised. So that's the only reason we haven't released the format. I think people will have the, more, the format they're accustomed to from Monday onwards, you know, with best of five in the men's and best of three sets in the ladies. And we're looking as we go through the tournament, especially in the ladies, have extended the, the format. But that's all to be signed off. As I've been consistent with, with anything WDF, as soon as we have the information, you will have it. I'm not really into speculative news. I just, I, I think I've stuck to that in the last couple of years. When I have something to say, we will say it publicly and announce it. Excellent. Well, just talking of ladies' darts, um, it's exciting to hear that there may be an extension of the of the format there. And ladies' darts has grown so much since the last amateur world championships. Um, with the women's series, of course, coming in and so many new names. Mikuru Suzuki is now playing some fantastic darts. Bo Greaves, we expect to be back at the, the World Championship, of course. It's going to be a hotly contested race, isn't it? It is. And, and we set out one of the key items was about trying to bridge the kind of look. How do I word it correctly? That, that there's a huge disparity between the ladies and the men's game in terms of prize money. Now, a lot of that is a portion to the fact that there isn't as much interest in the women's game. So attendances at the Opens are maybe 20% of what the men's is. Mm -hmm. But which comes first? We, as the WDF, as the governing body, want to ensure that the incentives are there for the women. So there's a rule across all tournaments that the prize money in the women's tournament can be no less than 50% of the men's at any given round. And that is why we've made the adjustments that we've made at Lakeside. We'd be wrong, wouldn't we, if we did that in all the Opens and then not, not doing it at the World Championship. So that's why the prize money is up to £25,000 for the Women's World Champion, as it should be, I believe. Mm. And just another question on the female participants in the World Championship. Obviously, mm -hmm. Lisa Ashton's a tour card holder. I, I would imagine she wouldn't be expected to be competing um, at mm -hmm. the WDF World Championships, but for the likes of uh, Fallon Sherrick, Dieter Hedman, Lorraine and Stanley, many more names that don't have tour cards, if they were to compete in the PDC World Championship, would that rule them out of the WDF event or would they be able to compete should that be the case? Yeah, as in the previous years, we've seen Makuru, Anastasia, Fallon, Dieter, that th anyone that's played at Ali Pali uh, can play the Ladies World Championship at the lakeside, that's not a problem. Yeah, Lisa's situation is different purely for the fact that of the rules for tour card holders. Mm. So Lisa is unable to play in any events in 2021 that could get her to lakeside. Yeah. So for Lisa, it's a different issue. But for any other woman that should qualify for Alexandra Palace, they will be entitled to play at lakeside should they qualify. We will invite them. 